In this video, we're going to continue on with our coin market cap chart for chart.js. And what we're going to do now is, as you can see here, as I hover over here, this works out fine. And you can see here the bo the bars at the very bottom here are now being added. So we have now what we call the volume bars that will be added besides the price of the stock here. So let's start to explore how we can do this. So let's start to explore how we can put in the bars here below. And what we're going to do is we're going to continue on, and this is part 14 of this series. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down here, and I'm going to add up a new data set. So basically what I want to have is a new data set, and it has a unique type. So we're going to have this one here, put a comma, then we're going to put in here uh, curly braces, and then within here, let's put this enter here, so we have this nice space here, and then within here, I'm going to say the following. First of all, we're going to give it a a uh, label so we define this we say here label will be uh, we could say here stock volume or something like that doesn't matter so much the next item will be the specific uh, uh, type and in this case what we want for type is the bar and we have set it here below somewhere let's see here the type is line but then we're going to say that this specific data set will not be a line but will be a bar so that's what we have here. And once we did this, I need to have data. And the data here, well, what I can do for now is I can just copy this here, the numbers, copy this, scroll down here, and put it in there. Later on, I'm going to adjust that. And then next, uh, well, let's save this first and see what happens. If I refresh here, what is happening is you can see here, we have these bars and they're matching exactly because there is the same value as our points here. What happens and this is very important the bars here sadly enough if i hover over here this will remove our uh, uh, interpolation interpolation here or an across or across here so that is the only thing here but we're going to do you some tricks that will make sure that this is always at the very bottom so it will not impact us much so i'm going to accept that tiny flaw it's the only one and i might eventually find a solution for that but i don't have a solution for that as of now. So what I'm going to do here, first of all, I first thought that would be like the, the point hit radius or the point hover radius, like these kind of items here. But if I save this, refresh, even with this, it doesn't work. So something is blocking it. Anyway, doesn't matter. What we want to do next is I want to give this volume, like in a stock uh, chart, has a high volume or different volume because it, it calculates how many items has been sold. So what I'm going to do here is very simple. I'm going to see a constant volume, and this volume will be an array as well. And what we're going to do here is just basically this copy that. We say your volume will be push this man, and then maybe get the numbers 100 or something like that. Doesn't matter. So save, refresh. All right, there we are. Of course, nothing happens yet. What I want to do is copy the volume, scroll down here to the numbers, and put it in here. Next, what I want to do is one, once I have this, I want to start to trigger another item here. Because if I would do now a refresh, this of course is not what I want. What I want to do is I want to put on the side here a other scale that will track the exact values. So to do this, I'm putting here enter, and then I'm going to say here a y axis ID. And I'm going to say this will be a new scale, and this scale I will name the volume scale. The volume scale. Let's make sure you spell it correctly. And once we have this, we can save this. We need to now refresh. You can see here the volume scale, but it is of course at the wrong location. So this is not desirable. So what I'm going to do, scroll down here. In the scales, I'm going to put it intentionally here, after. I don't want to put it there because that might impact any of our designs. So I want to do it after. After X and Y, we have this one. So it's a volume, this is a volume, scale basically the object we have just created and then within here i'm going to say type and this type will be linear it will be linear type of chart of a scale and then next position we're going to say to the right save refresh so now we have this here absolutely phenomenal but of course right now it's still equal height so what i want to do is i want to push these bars down to do that i want this scale to be forced to a far higher item but also, 
you will see here that these grid lines are becoming darker and the reason why is because they are now exactly the same and let me show you what I mean by that. So if I go down here, I'm going to say here a minimum value of zero and then we're going to say a maximum value and this maximum value, let's say here, 950. Save, refresh. So as you can see here now, what is happening? We have double grid lines here, but we push our bars very low here and that's absolutely phenomenal because that's what I wanted. So what I want to do now is hide all of this because I don't care about these values. Later on when we hover over this here, we might want to have a tooltip with that information showing our stock price and of course the volume, how many volume has been bought. So that is what we need to do now. Or that will be of course in another video, but that is one of the things. However, what I want to do here now is I want to change this. I want to remove all of these items here and remove the grid lines here. So I'm going to put this max on just on 1000, first of all. Save, refresh. And now it looks again exactly identical, but that's all right. Then I'm going to say here, comma. I'm going to say here, the grid, uh, grid. And then we're going to say here, the, which is specifically the grid lines. That's how I'm targeting right now. You can see that's why we have dark lines. Say so display equals false, save. Refresh, and now as you can see, the lines here on the grid lines are now equal color. They're just lighter compared to previously. The next thing what I want to do here then is to remove the scale numbers. We don't need that information, so that's all redundant for us. So I say comma, and then what I'm going to say here, ticks, I'm going to say display equals false as well. Save, refresh. And there we are. So now I remove that, and of course, the bar here looks beautiful here, nice down. And now we have all the information, and later on we can extract both of these eventually. So once we have this now, now this is all working, it is time for the zoom functionality, and that will be the next video.